Hey darling, is there anything you would want to do if you turned young again? Said Shuzu to his beloved, Ayane. He apologizes for not being able to take her on a honeymoon when they were younger because they were poor. But she doesn't worry about it. She's already happy just being able to talk and spend peaceful time with him. The elderly couple headed towards an important apple tree. The one they had planted together after getting married to celebrate their wedding, which was 60 years ago. The tree even split after an accident with a typhoon, but they took care of it, and the tree recovered. The power of nature is incredible. There, Annie is incredulous when she sees a golden apple. Could this be a blessed fruit? That night, Shuzu reflected on how he was poor and busy when he was younger. But still, his wife never cared about that and stood by his side through all the difficulties. Still, he thinks about how she might have wanted to wear chic clothes or travel to various cities. He washes his face and when he looks in the mirror, he sees his young face reflected. He can hardly believe what he sees and runs screaming his wife's name. And to his surprise and joy, she has also rejuvenated. Annie is speechless with surprise. So, Shuzu immediately calls her for a honeymoon. On another night, their granddaughter Mino comes to visit, only to be stunned to see her grandparents as beautiful and healthy young people, getting lost in the world a bit. She quickly gets used to it and even jokes with them, asking if she could have Shuzu for herself. On the way home, Mino cheerfully mentions to her father about the young grandparents. But of course, he has no idea what she means. During a game of cricket, two elderly men discuss how they've missed seeing Shuzu and Ayane lately, with those two being known as the lucky lovebirds. We even hear several elderly ladies scream at the young and handsome Shuzu as he assesses the ball. They even admit they stand no chance against the young ones. Ayane appears there offering tea to everyone, and the two old men tremble just by seeing Ayane so young. We go back a few days in the past, where Shuzu and his son Yoshiaki were arguing. Yoshiaki wanted his parents to move in with them, as he was worried about their old age. However, Shuzu refused to give in, knowing that their ancestors had protected that land for hundreds of years. Aini apologized to her daughter-in-law Kid for having to hear their husbands arguing while they did the dishes. Aini felt perfectly fine as long as she could stay by her husband's side. Back to the present, Keed came to bring ingredients that Ayane had asked for. But she is met by her father-in-law, who kindly mentions that Ayane is at a community center meeting right now. And now Keed is totally confused because it's the first time she's seen Shuzu Young like this. And oh my god. She immediately hides in the bathroom because she wasn't expecting her father-in-law to be so handsome. This is getting a little indecent. Indecent enough for Ayane to feel strange vibes. Later, Yoshiaki had a slight headache, trying to understand the magic that had happened to his parents. Now he knew what his daughter Mino meant when she said she was playing boyfriends with her grandpa. She nervously explained to her father, saying that Shuzu is very kind, unlike her father. He understood the weird vibe there. Mino gets clingy with her grandfather again, and Keith says granddaughter and grandfather are forbidden even in fiction. The course of this peaceful family's meal is getting a little strange. Anyway, Shuzu asserts that he only has eyes for his beloved, and Annie tells him they'll have a talk later. Hold on, why did Shuzu get punished here? Yoshiaki and his family are already leaving. Aini strokes her son's head, wondering if he's working too hard lately, which takes him back to his childhood, when, as an adult, you don't receive as many compliments, do you? At a meeting for the Intertown Sports Festival, the elderly participants are worried about losing the festival, as they are old and have physical disadvantages. But their friend has a solution, and the solution is Shuzu, with his enviable physique and powerful muscles, he is like a Greek god. <laughs> On the day of the festival, the town from the north comes to intimidate the town from the south, knowing that all the members of the southern town are over 50 years old. The northern town is counting on the victory of Shoyuta Igarashi, a second-year high school student who is part of the soccer club, and Daiki, a third-year high school student and captain of the baseball team. However, one of the old men says they have a secret weapon, and that weapon is the Saitu couple. The old adversary finds it funny, but upon seeing the arrival of the couple, he can't believe his eyes. During the first game, the strengths between the two teams were tied, 
However, one of the little old ladies from the Southern group convinces Ayane to do something to cheer up the team. This makes Shuzu awaken an incredible strength, winning the match. Even if Ayane got a little embarrassed. The next event is a three-legged baton race with the brothers leading the competition. As they have been playing sports together for over 10 years, they have synchrony advantage. But do you think they can compete with the synchrony of a couple almost 70 years together? I don't think so. The moment the Saitu couple receives the baton, Shuzu and Ayane easily lead, and the two claim a victory. No matter what the event, the Saitu couple crushes it, and the southern town wins by a landslide. With the northern town losing, Grandpa Igarashi isn't so happy about the embarrassment his grandsons faced. He's resentful that Shuzu stole Ani from him 70 years ago, and now has stolen his grandson's smiles. But then, Ani pays them a visit. She can't be near her husband right now, as he's receiving so much praise for his victory and is surrounded. So, she decided to share lunch with the Igarashis. While they were having lunch, Grandpa Igarashi mentions that his wife passed away three years ago. He complains that she left their grandsons. Annie then remarks that their grandsons remind her of him when he was young, when he confessed his feelings to her. This surprises the boys. That's why he was always fighting with the Southern team. On another day, Grandpa Igarashi sent Shoyuda to deliver something as thanks for the meal. But with Mino answering the door, the boy blushed, as it seems he likes her. He hands over the bag, and she invites him inside. Shoyuda still didn't know Mino was related to that infamous couple who defeated them. She had always been nice to him at school, and he had a certain feeling for her, but didn't know how to proceed. He tries to disguise it by messing with his phone, but it doesn't help much, as she also gets interested in what he's playing. Unbeknownst to them, Mino's mom and grandma had been spying. And Keed is wondering what to do if her daughter gets a boyfriend and eventually gets married. However, Shuzu is excited to have great-grandchildren. Talking with Shuzu, Shota finds him very kind, but somehow feels immense pressure from Ayane and Keed. With the adults wanting to know more about Shota, Mino praises him for being smart and good at sports. However, this only leads Ayane and Keed to nervously whisper, judging whether he would be a good match for Mino. Shuzu tries to ask Shota if there's a girl he likes, only to be quickly stopped by his wife, who makes an excuse that there was a mosquito on his face. After a while, Shota says his goodbyes for the evening. Mino goes back into the living room with her grandfather, feeling a little sad because she wanted to talk with Shota alone a bit more, leaving Shuzu intrigued because now only he knows. On another day, Mino is surprised to hear that her grandmother was the one who confessed to Shuzu first. They married for love, which was rare back then. Shuzu then said he always yearned for Ayane and told her he was overjoyed. But the times just wouldn't allow it. His father was a man of tradition. He intended Shuzu to have an arranged marriage with the daughter of his good friend. Because back then, the family a person was born into influenced a lot of things. At first, Shuzu didn't do anything, until he had a huge fistfight with his father. For a while, he thought of eloping, but with Ayane's support, they managed to overcome everything. Shuzu remembered his wife to be so cool back then. She even confronted the girl his father introduced to him, with Ayane telling her, I'll never let you have my man. Well, she also had someone she liked, so the girl was kind enough to withdraw gracefully. Annie feels embarrassed by the story, and Mino says that Grandma really went all out. Hearing all this, Mino decided to ask Ayane if she could consider her a love rival and reenact that moment. This makes Shuzu's eyes light up, eager to see his beloved in that scene. So, Ayane had no choice. She held Mino's face and spoke those same words at that fateful encounter, making the granddaughter and grandfather sigh over Ayane. Shuzu feels truly grateful to have married this woman. Ah, they're so cute. This anime is quite fun. It's really nice to see the focus on an already established couple. No one questions much the fact that they are young again, but maybe we'll see more about it in the next episodes. Like this video and subscribe to my channel for the next episode next week. For now, watch this next video. It's me.
Kamui. Hoping you have a wonderful day just like you. See you all soon until next time. Two young men were walking through the apple orchard. They were tired of country life and eager to go to Tokyo, thinking they could find a beautiful girlfriend there. They see Ayane tending to the plants and remember there always used to be an elderly couple there. But they are impressed when they see how beautiful Ayane is. They feel embarrassed the moment she looks at them. They had never seen that beautiful woman before, but they conclude she must be the daughter of that elderly couple. Shuzu appears there by car to pick up his beloved, bidding the boys farewell and telling them to take care. They now have a desire to live in the countryside. After that, Ayane has been seeing those same boys quite often. In the past, Ayane asks her beloved if she could throw away those old pamphlets. He says it's okay, but she ends up observing those beautiful dresses for a while longer, lost in thought. She then decides to go prepare dinner. In the present, Ayane asks if her husband went somewhere, but he replies that he just took a walk. Observing a strange package on the ground, she opens it to see what it is, and it's a beautiful white dress, just like the ones in the magazine. Shuzu still insists he didn't do anything, and he thanks him immensely, that dress is wonderful. Shuzu takes a moment to watch something his granddaughter Mino recommended. He sees that the things young people consume these days are quite extreme. To tell the truth, he has no idea what's good about it. He thinks he and his beloved understand each other very well and don't need to be kissing all the time. Ani, on the other hand, gets quite distracted by the soap opera and even feels like doing the same. Girls are indeed more romantic, huh? Ani then asks a favor of her husband. So, the two of them recreate the love scene from the soap opera, creating a warm atmosphere. However, Ani says that not much has changed, but they have been together for over 60 years, so it's understandable. Shuzu agrees with that, but as he turns away, Ani admits that it was getting very hot and spicy. Later, an old friend of Ayane's arrives and Mino answers the door. The lady compliments Mino, saying she has grown a lot and asks several other questions with a strange accent. Mino gets tangled up in the conversation and becomes dizzy, not understanding anything. Ayane then arrives to save the day. The lady says that Ayane looks beautiful, what did she do after all? Ayane simply says she became a little younger. Mino is impressed with her grandmother Ayane's acting ability. The lady pinches Mino's cheeks, saying how cute she is and asking if she would like to marry her grandson. Mino is speechless, but Ani protects her. She won't be getting married for a while. Mino now wants to marry her grandma. Shirori, the daughter of Ayane's second son, Takahiro, will spend a few days at her grandparents' house because she argued with her father. Shirori is amazed at her grandmother's youthfulness. Shirori struggled at school. Even though she studied hard and lost some friends because of it, she couldn't shine like her father, who wanted her to study medicine. She thinks she has nothing now, neither studies, nor friends, nor her father. But Ayane says it's not true. She's crying and that proves she hasn't given up and is fighting. In the past, Shirori wanted to become a super doctor to cure all of her grandmother Ayane's illnesses. Shirori is moved and asks to have dinner with her grandma. Once, Ayane fell ill, preventing the couple from traveling and having fun at a beach. She apologizes to Shozu, but he is okay with it. He wouldn't go without her either, after all, the best part is seeing his beloved in a bikini. <laughs> boy. In the present, Ayane sees some bikini models and concludes that young people these days show a lot. She thinks about which bikini would make Shuzu happy if she were to wear one. He's a bit of a pervert, so she thinks he would be happy with something that shows a lot. But walking around like that in front of other people is a bit too much for Ayane. She could also wear her new dress on the beach day. In that, Shirori says she doesn't need to dwell on it. She can be aggressive and show a lot. After all, she's very beautiful. Ani says she still feels old inside and isn't at the age to expose herself like that. Shirori says it doesn't matter. She just needs to tease her husband a bit. In a good way. Ani decides to think about it while making dinner and avoids the conversation. Shuzu happily dozed off in the meantime. Ani answers the ringing phone. A person on the other end claims to be her son, saying, It's me, mom. It's me. Ani thinks for a few seconds and asks if it's Yoshiaki. The person confirms it, and expected Ani's voice to be a bit hoarser. Ani finds it all very strange. Obviously, it's a scam. She presses the record button and goes along with the guy. He says he's going through problems and asks for 200,000 in a bank transfer, giving her the code. In the end, 
INE cuts the scammer's happiness short and the person hangs up. The next day, the same person turned himself in to the police. Later, INE sees that she no longer needs glasses. Her eyes have also become younger, even better than Mino's. She can read from great distances and Mino concludes that her grandma has supervision. Shuzu arrives curiously and asks what they are plotting. Mino then plays a little game and points out words for INE to say, and makes her flirt with Shuzu. INE repeats the test with Mino, almost revealing who she likes. Later, while watching a soap opera, Mino asks if INE and Shuzu have ever walked hand in hand. INE denies it, saying that would be like telling everyone they were dating, would it be too exposed? Shuzu says that when you become an elderly couple, holding hands is more to help each other support. Mino sees that more romance is lacking there. Returning from shopping, our dear couple walk together. The weather is cold today and Annie keeps one hand out of her coat. Shuzu notices this and thinks about what Mino said earlier about holding hands. He would feel a bit defeated if he did that. She asks if he's not cold, but he denies it. Annie thinks he needs to understand hints better, but Shuzu also has one hand out and signals for Annie to notice. They finally hold hands, they even look like teenage couple. Shuzu and Ino go to their son Takahiro's office, explaining how they became younger. He and his assistant are incredulous. They undergo routine exams, and Takahiro concludes that they really are much better than before. In the past, Aini was diagnosed with cancer, Takahiro became a doctor to cure her of it, but only managed to introduce a good doctor to her, control the exams, and take care of the medications. Watching his mother become weaker and weaker was not easy at all. Takahiro can't help but get emotional, even though he didn't cure her, he feels like he's being rewarded for all his effort. Annie is very proud of him. In the past, when there was a big typhoon in the orchard, the tree of their marriage was almost knocked down. Shuzu and Annie worked together to take care of it and not let it die. This same tree rewarded them later with the fruit of youth. They picked the fruit and broke it into several pieces to eat. It was as if the fruit was asking to be consumed by them. That apple was really delicious. The tree gratefully thanks them for fighting so hard for it. Its mission is accomplished and now it departs in peace. After that, Aini had a strange dream, where she old, saw a giant hourglass reversing and heading towards her. Shuzu had exactly the same dream, now he was surprised. Today, they celebrate 58 years of marriage, time really flies. They decide to celebrate as they always do and Aini suspects that Shuzu has prepared something hidden again, but he denies it, saying that a regular cake is fine. Annie prepared a hidden rice dish and is sure her husband also prepared a surprise, and upon opening the fridge, she was right. She wonders why she married such a liar, the pot calling the kettle black. Shuzu doesn't do this to anyone else but his beloved. After all, she is his dear beloved. Ah, they are really very cute. Like this video and subscribe to my channel for the next episode next week. For now, watch this next video. See you soon, until next time. Shuzu and Aini discuss about their school days. Shuzu worked on the farm after elementary school, and Aini studied for a while at a girls' school in Tokyo. She loved that school. She could eat rice whenever she wanted and the water came out when she turned on the tap. But her dream came to a tragic end with a war in that place. Everything was destroyed and Annie was forced to return to the countryside and work in the mud she hated so much. However, after meeting a certain someone, that mud didn't seem so bad. Annie agrees that Tokyo never lacked anything, but there are things here that you can't find in Tokyo. Shuzu asks what these things could be, but Annie says it's a secret, even though it's pretty obvious. Shuzu is now even more curious. Later, Mino's father asked him to take his video game to his grandparents. It would help prevent dementia. Shuzu is old school and thinks kids should play more things like cards, tag, or spinning tops. Anyway, Mino will leave the video game. And actually, Shuzu quite likes it, just like Ayane. They play a survival game with zombies, and throughout the game, Shuzu says that the protagonists heal themselves using a leaf, they almost seem superhuman. Mino thought their age would make it all a bit difficult, but they master the game with absurd ease and even win all the trophies. These two would platinum games until they couldn't take it anymore. Later, Mino returns home to his grandparents' house, and there he finds Shirori, whom he hadn't seen in a long time. She tries to hug her, but Shirori is at Sundra, and Sundras don't take baths and are embarrassed by affection. Although the two of them go to the same school, they are from different worlds. In childhood, they used to play Beyblade all the time, 
but Shirori retorts that it was a long time ago. Mino says that Shirori has always loved their grandparents since forever, and she's here at their house now. She can pretend to be rude as much as she wants, but deep down she loves them very much. Shirori rebuffs this again, saying it's not like she likes them or anything. But before finishing, Shuzu appears just in time. This deeply affects him, he even starts acting like a broken robot, thinking his granddaughter hates him. Mino begs Shirori to fix this misunderstanding. Shirori tries to fix the situation, very embarrassed, but she manages it. She asks not to be hated, and this fills Shuzu with hope again. At night, Shuzu has that same strange dream of when he rejuvenated, with an hourglass appearing in front of him. He and his wife have been having the same dream frequently. He finds the place quite strange and reflects on his life as he sits near the hourglass. There are still many things they haven't done, like the trip their son arranged for them. Now that Ayane is young again, Shuzu thinks he'll finally be able to fulfill his wish of taking his wife on a trip. After all, you never know what might happen. At this point, the hourglass turns upside down, and when Shuzu wakes up, he's old again. He doesn't feel any pain so far, despite his appearance, his body inside still feels somewhat young. But what really worries him is Ayane's opinion about it. She must prefer him young as before and not old and decrepit like now. But Ayane thinks that's ridiculous and makes it clear that the man she fell in love with wasn't young Shuzu or old Shuzu, but the unique man he is. She also tells him not to underestimate his age. Shuzu realizes that would be disrespecting the life they've had together. He had forgotten what really mattered. So, Shuzu decides, and when the time for the trip they arranged comes, he'll go even though he's old. Giving up on life just because of age isn't worth it. It was exactly that attitude that won Ayane's heart. Ah, these two are so cute. Later, when they visit Takahiro for a consultation, Shuzu's organs are getting closer and closer to his current age, but he still has the muscles of his youth. With Shuzu out of the room, Ayane asks how his overall condition is. Takahiro says he's okay for now, but if this continues, Shuzu will leave much sooner than Ayane. She would have to stay alone for another 70 years. Even their children would leave before her. She doesn't mind the end of her life, but seeing her beloved and their children leave so early would leave her in depression. Ayane became much closer to Shuzu after this. Later, Mino and his parents see that Shuzu has become old again but is still strong. They even have an arm wrestling match, and Yoshiaki intends to give a gift if he wins. An outdoor hot spring pool for when they travel. Shuzu becomes even more determined and easily wins the match. Seriously, what a strong old man. The couple goes shopping, and the strange looks from people bother Shuzu. Now everyone must think Ayane is his granddaughter because of the age difference. When an employee goes to serve them, he has the same thought, asking if he would like to buy something for his granddaughter. Shuzu thinks it's better to agree with this and avoid strange thoughts, but Ayane retorts, stating with determination that he is her husband. Even though it's natural to think there's something else, she asks the seller to be understanding. She understands why Shuzu wanted to lie, but she can't stand the idea of not being the wife of her beloved. Ayane's favorite treat, Mame Daifuku, since they became young, they have been eating a lot. But now that Shuzu is old, he needs to be careful with diabetes. So Ayane avoided eating the sweets in front of him, saying she wasn't hungry. So when they go to bed, Ayane makes her midnight snack and eats her favorite sweets. She would feel very guilty eating in front of her beloved, but he appears right behind her. She is embarrassed and explains that she wasn't trying to eat behind his back. He perfectly understands that she just didn't want to leave him craving for food, and says that seeing his beloved's happy face while she eats is the best medicine in the world. Ah, they're so sweet. In the past, after Ayane lost her parents and her home, she went to live with her mother's relatives and work with them in the fields. Her father had a lot of money, but he acted arrogantly towards Ayane's mother's family. This made her relatives avoid her. Their accent was heavy, and Ayane had a lot of difficulty understanding. The Tokyo dialect made Ayane seem like a stranger to everyone there. People made fun of her. After work, Ayane used to rest in a shrine nearby. This was a path that Shuzu always took. He finds Ayane, they only knew each other by sight, so they introduced themselves. And then Ayane's stomach rumbles with hunger. She tells Shuzu to forget about it immediately, but he offers her food. She looks around and says it's better not to do that. He must have heard the rumors about her, but Shuzu doesn't care about that. It's no reason to leave her hungry. Ayane sees that even in this resistant environment, kindness can exist. They met several times there in the same place. So she wonders when that man will be able to melt her heart. In the present, 
she admits that he melted her whole heart. Shuzu dreams again of his biological hourglass. He was waiting for this moment. If turning the hourglass reversed his youth, then turning it again will fix things. He also sees that some of the sand is spilling out of the hourglass. He can't wait to see his beloved's reaction. But when she sees it, she just says his hair is messier. Later, Ayane is afraid of never aging again or even having an end in her life. But Shuzu explains that's unlikely to happen. Some of the sand was out, so one day it will end. From the state of the hourglass, they probably only have a few more years. Shuzu makes it clear that Ayane is the only person he doesn't want to leave behind. This greatly moves her, and they hug. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for the next episode next week. Thanks for watching and see you next time.